Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, June 24th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, today we got an interesting diary thanks to one of our Sans EDU graduate students, Karim. He wrote up traffic going to the Cyber Bunker network. Now, I'm planning on having him on the show on Friday, but a little bit ahead of that about what he found. First of all, Cyberbunker is, well, about as real of a bulletproof hosting provider as there was in that Cyberbunker operated out of an actual nuclear bunker. They purchased that in Germany, was one of the leftover Cold War NATO bunkers that they moved their servers into. And well, they hosted a number of criminal websites and the like out of that bunker. Now, late last year, around September, the entire operation was raided. And at the time, of course, the servers were dismantled, but we now got a chance to actually have the IP address space that Cyberbunker used assigned to one of our honeypots. So based on the traffic that our honeypots received, we were able to kind of deduct a little bit how Cyberbunker operated. Cyberbunker didn't necessarily run uh, these different websites themselves. They sort of operated like a co-location hosting provider. What I found interesting was, well, first of all, there were still a couple of botnets reaching out uh, to what appear to be command control servers that were co-located with Cyberbunker. Bunker, but almost more interesting, I found ad traffic that would point back to various websites within Cyberbunker. So uh, these ads, as part of uh, the links pointing to the Cyberbunker websites, which of course were now uh, defunct, we didn't have the content of the sites, but keywords added uh, to uh, these referral links kind of told us uh, what these websites were about. Now, the particular ad network being used here, getmyads.com, appears to be also a little bit shady in the sense that it does use kind of a multi-level marketing scheme here in order to buy ads on various websites. So I hope on Friday we'll cover this in a little bit more depth together with Karim. And traditionally, Microsoft has always delivered security products focused on securing, well, its core ecosystem, Windows and related products. But well, uh, with Windows now including essentially a Linux subsystem and the like, Microsoft is getting more interested in securing Linux as well. And so Microsoft now announced that at least for its enterprise customers that sign up for Microsoft's advanced threat protection, they can also get protection for Linux and Android. And in addition, Microsoft is actually now trying to tackle one of of the hard problems to secure BIOS or actually UEFI, the Unified Extendable Firmware Interface, by also adding that scanning capability into Microsoft Defender. Now, it doesn't look like any of this will be geared towards home users. It's really sort of more rolled into Microsoft's fairly expensive enterprise product suite. So we'll see how it uh, takes off. Uh, But of course, particular for enterprises, having sort of that unified admin interface is always a big win. And that's probably why they're going after uh, this particular segment. Now, if you're saying, hey, I don't really worry that much about Linux for my Windows users, the main problem is still that, well, they enable macros when they are receiving a document. Microsoft got you covered here as well in that it did now open safe documents for general 
availability. This is sort of an improvement on the protected view. Currently, without safe documents, if you do receive a document, it's usually in protected view. But all you have to do is click enable editing and well, uh, macros can take a run at you. With safe documents, if the administrator enable that for a particular organization's Office 365 account, all documents will go through uh, magic, Microsoft artificial intelligence, anti-malware engine. While they're being analyzed, you can not enable editing only after they have been analyzed and found benign, then you're able to enable editing. And of course, if they're found to be malicious, uh, then you can only view them in protected view. So in the end, it's not really all that different from the functionality from sort of classic and high malware. The nice part is it's fully integrated in Office 365. And then of course, Microsoft at least claims that their magic antivirus detection is pretty good. So we'll see how that works out. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.